Good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. I have access to um, one of the Kingdom Halls. I have made a video on this a long time ago showing that um, they have an evolution or basically what it is, a vote to see how much money they're going to give Watchtower each month. And sometimes it was my information at that time, I think it was around 800 something dollars a month. They're giving Watchtower. Other King Halls, what we found out was between 1,000. It depends how big the Kingdom Hall is. I was listening to uh, a guy that um, got his own little church. He brought out some interesting things about the tithes in the Bible and how religion, even Watchtower, do not want to hear. And when I was listening to this, I I was about ready to turn it off, but I listened to it all the way. He brought some lot of points, and I like to share his information, which is based on the Bible, showing that Watchtower and other big churches are scamming people out of their money. Is what I just said. Scamming people out of their money and using the Bible as a tool of doing it. So I'm gonna uh, play and then I'm gonna maybe break in here and there and we then discuss some of his points. So let's get into this. I actually believe that this is a closer biblical model to the early church than getting a building and, and renting out a space or spending millions of dollars on a building and, and doing that. Now, I'm not against a good church that's preaching good doctrine if they're big and they get, you know, if they're... A good doctrine, that means a true, honestly, church preaching from the Bible. Now we know 100% that Watchtower only teaches from the Watchtower 100% literature and their profound Bible 100% but not from the real Bible. You can't compare the real Bible to Jehovah's Witnesses' Bible. There's no equal. One is good, and one is total evil. It has so much corruption in it. And that's Jehovah's Witnesses' Bible. I know. I found a lot of stuff in the Bible was wrong. Others found a lot of stuff wrong with this Bible, so you cannot get good positive energy from this corrupt Bible. You cannot find it. Only ones that finds it, it's the ones that's already delusional, already brain control, thinking this is the true knowledge of God's Word which is a blaspheme compared to the other Bibles. Let's continue. There are 50 people or 100 people and they can't fit uh, to get a building. I'm not dogmatic about that. I don't think we should be dogmatic on either side of that. But 
there's this whole battle between house churches and, you know, institutional churches, that, that this debate that goes on. And I don't understand why the side of the institutional church is coming down hard on people that meet in houses, when in fact it's the house churches that were actually a more biblical example. We don't have any examples of, of um, churches meeting in buildings in the Bible, but we have a lot of verses that they met in, in houses. Again, not to be dogmatic about that. If a church is meeting in a building and preaching good doctrine, getting people saved, I'm all for it. You know, I'm not saying that they might have other issues, uh, but when it comes to the scriptures, Philemon 1-2 says, And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. So it's listed right there. Colossians 4.15 Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in their house. Romans 16.5 Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. 1 Corinthians 16.19 The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their their house. So we see this a lot, and you know, it doesn't even say house churches, it's just they are the church, and they meet in a house. You know, so I don't really like any of these labels, you know, house churches, or house church movement, or any of that. It's just we are a church of God, and we meet in a house, like the, like the, um, the early churches did. And you know, it's possible that one day God might lead us to, if we're going to be more effective for the gospel, to get a building. But I don't anticipate that. And I'm not aiming for that. You know, but I want to be open to, this, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's, that's another big tradition that's come in to the church. So why this criticism then for pastors and the religious about churches that meet in houses? You know, when the tribulation hits, do you think it's going to be these neatly ordained and seminary trained pastors and corporate government run churches meeting publicly in their rented buildings that are going to be the ones to lead the people of God against the Antichrist? And Jehovah Witnesses think they are going to be the only sole survivor to all this trouble we're going to be having soon. They think that all their kingdom halls is being blessed by God. They are part of the Antichrist. They are the ones trying to convert Christians people are trying to do the right thing with the right hearts to be something evil when you become a Jehovah Witness they are groups out there are dangerous if you've been listening to the news How big organizations, religious, are pure evil. Jehovah's Witnesses are in the same category. If you don't join their religion, you will die. You don't get in to the program you would die if you don't go door to door your spirit you're weak and you would die they are forcing you to join this group and stay above it and do everything they tell you to do so my question is before we go any further why do you think God's religion would want to take so much money 
from their members when they could be served using that money in their own kingdom halls for their own pioneers their own people that that can't pay the electric bill or maybe they lost their job brothers and sisters could be helping their own members in their own congregations they don't do that because their dedication is to send the money to Watchtower after they pay their own bills, electric bill, whatever, the things they need to keep that Kingdom Hall up and running. Why give Watchtower almost a thousand dollars a month when they could use that money to do more good in their own Kingdom Hall? Let's continue and see the real reason why they do it. You know, are these going to be the churches that, that will lead them, or will it be the, the churches that are meeting in the houses, sometimes secretly having to go underground when the tribulation period hits? You know, who's going to be more effective during that time and even able to preach the gospel and be more prepared? So we shouldn't be against churches that are meeting in houses. And, um... I do prefer it, though, because there's an intimate fellowship that occurs when you actually get involved in each other's lives, and um, much biblical support for that, as we saw. So, one of the reasons, though, that the pastors rail against churches that meet in houses is because they're either deceived by modern tradition, or because churches that meet in houses usually don't push their favorite tradition of all time. What is Jehovah Witness's biggest tradition? What is it, Watchtower? Isn't what your elders is getting something from y'all to push? To give, to give, to give more money to you. Isn't that what y'all have mentioned a long time ago about not passing the collection plate? Bragging, y'all don't pass the collection plate. But you got boxes in the back. Uh, you have voting during the Kingdom Hall, catch people off guard. And if you don't raise your hand to vote, people will know you not going to give Watchtower no money. Is that putting people on the spot? How dare you take people's money and give it to the Lawyers to protect you to the cases that you lost on because you got people in your congregation can't keep their hands to themselves and touching children. And our money is going is sent to pay those people off so they don't go on the news and tell the truth so you're paying them off to keep their mouth shut you are on despicable crap religion let's continue which is the obligatory tithe and you'll notice that in this church we don't pass around an offering plate because there's actually no biblical basis for passing around an offering plate. And I've, I've preached about this in the past, a full sermon just on tithing, so I don't want to re-preach that whole part of it. Uh, but there's, in fact, no Bible verses that talk about 
commanding Christians to tithe 10% of their income. The tithe was an Old Testament ordinance instituted exclusively for the Levitical priesthood. Since the Levites were not given any land, when God divided up the promised land among the twelve tribes of Israel, he was apportioning the land in the time of Joshua to the tribes, um, he didn't give any land to the tribe of Levi, which took on the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood of, of that time. And people, God's people, were commanded to give 10% of all their increase, of everything that they owned, to the, to the uh, Levites for the service that they were doing for God's people. Numbers 18, starting at verse 20, talks about that. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thus uh, thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. So it's there in black and white in the scriptures, in the written word of God, that the tithe was instituted for the tribe of Levi during the Old Covenant. Right, so it was not for the other 11 tribes. It was just just the Levites, the ones who was the ones who was doing the work of God at that time. So that's right tell, should tell you something right there. They're trying to use Bible scriptures to make money off of people. To make money. Like Jim and Tammy Baker. Uh, the property they bought. And I, got, and I remember they had a doghouse was built. A doghouse built for their dog. One million dollars worth of donation money to build a million dollar dog house. Come on people. Isn't that about the same thing what Watchtower is doing to the members? Building Kingdom Halls, Circuit Assemblies, buying property they got this humongous big dog house for themselves and when they get done when they need any more money they can sell the property sell the land does it go back to the people who spent the money on it witnesses don't see a, a dime even when they when the Kim Hall is being sold, they don't see that money going back to the employee. What do you call it, the employees that work for the watchtower? The ones who bought the land, paid for it, built the Kim Hall, and they had to turn the deed to watchtower. And they still getting money off these people and then when they sell the property and all to be relocated into a different Kim Hall they don't get none of that money back people this is where all your Thai money and donation money goes to to an evil corrupt organization a book company Fantasy stories. Let's continue. You know, which we are no longer under. We are now under the new covenant of grace. So the tithe was instituted only for that purpose. So then why are pastors then pushing the tithe, keeping track of the tithe, and even demanding it at times? Watchtower 100% demanding you pay Watchtower this amount of money each month. P 
people. If it smells like a skunk, looks like a skunk, and lift its tail and squirt you, you know it's a skunk. Because of the bad smell, and it takes a lot of stuff to get that bad smell off of you. That is exactly what Watchtower has done to every Jehovah Witness. You are smells so bad in this religion it's all over the internet everything this religion is doing is corrupt your smell is so horrible it's making people sick of their stomach just looking at you smelling you even a friend of mine her husband stinks all the time because he fears to take a bath but he do honor that great God Jehovah he do go to the circuit assembly in the memorial and that's it and you know something what the Kim Hall like about him when he doesn't go to the cam hall because it makes the brothers and sisters sick of their stomach smelling body odor off this guy and he claiming to be a clean cut Jehovah Witness man how shameful well there are three possibilities Either your pastor is a novice and he shouldn't be preaching, or number two, he's deceived by the traditions of men, or three, he's knowingly making void the word of God in order to get paid. And, you know, you might say, well, a church needs money to operate, and that is true. We do spend money to keep things going. We do have... And there's nothing wrong to keep something like that, but when you go beyond taking money from people and there is something wrong some costs uh, but they're fairly minimal when you're meeting again in a house church because if you think about it the early church when they were meeting they were just huddled around together in a small house studying the word together and then they would go outside to preach the gospel they didn't have to hire staff and hire a secretary and pay rent all these extra biblical things that that we're seeing in today's modern churches and um the other thing is this is where the uh new testament giving comes in there is you know voluntary giving there is new testament giving but it needs to be done completely free you know freely from the heart not compulsory and um it doesn't look any which doesn't look anything like the tithe if it's if it's not compulsory second corinthians 9 7 is the clearest scripture that we have on giving in the new testament it says every man according as he purposeth in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver so the New Testament model of giving is actually generous. It's much more generous, much more abundant, and it's always freely given from the heart. It needs to come from the heart and not be obligatory. The prime example of New Testament giving is in the book of Acts chapter 4, starting at verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all, neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need so that picture of new testament giving was actually much more abundant than that 10 percent tithe but it was completely freely 
given. It wasn't compulsory. They gave all that they had. In other words, the early believers didn't go to church on Sunday, put in 10% of their tithe in the offering plate, and hear a sermon and go home, and then repeat Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Their entire lives were completely dedicated to God and the gospel and their fellow believers. And this was not a picture of godless communism where they were just distributing you know, all their money to the whole world. It was being shared among the believers. You know, the, the And the problem in, in this situation, he hit the nail with a hammer one time. The believers. There is nothing in Jehovah Witnesses' religion. It's called the truth. There is no true believers in God and Christ in this religion. So Witnesses, you are being deceived to give up your hard-earned money. Cut your education down to 5-10% and to be a salesman or saleswoman groom cut look like a, a supervisor or businessman when you go door to door I'm glad I am out So that's important to keep in mind. And pastors will go to extreme and roundabout ways to convince you that the tithe is still in effect. They'll cite Melchizedek as their prime example. Please listen to this story. With your open ears and your open mind, listen to this part. You'll find out the truth about giving money to this high priest, the real truth. Saying, well, you know, Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, you know, and so that's an example that they'll use to justify the tithe. But go back and reread Genesis 14, where this encounter occurs. Abraham only tithed 10% of the spoils of war that he'd recovered to Melchizedek when he recovered the stolen possessions of the king of Sodom in battle. It wasn't any of his own possessions that he was giving to Melchizedek. It was when you know the king, all the surrounding kings had captured all the you know spoils and all the women and all the possessions of the king of Sodom that he went back and recovered it and gave 10% of that back to Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, 4 uh, backs that up. It says, Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So it was the recovered goods that he gave to Melchizedek. So, you know, pastors will go all over the place in the Bible to, tr to try to prove a man-made tradition that the New Testament doesn't command. And so... This is one of the reasons many pastors get angry if you even bring up this issue, because now you're, you know, you're going after one of their most cherished and closely guarded traditions. And you heard it from him. There's no Bible base of any Jehovah Witness out there to give their hard-earned money to watch tower. Now if you want to take your money to help support the kingdom the kingdom hall, the cleaning, the maintenance, that's your choice. But the good choice is when you find the real truth about this religion, you need to stop giving them money. You need to stop giving them cash because when the money stopped flowing to the watchtower and it's, it's time for watchtower to shut its doors permanently so I got a question before I stop this 
If you find out everything we found out, everything we learned about the real truth, about the truth of watchtowers deceiving you, is it time for you to stop giving your life to a false god? Is it time to stop dedicating your life to those seven idiots that you've been putting your trust in all these years? It's about time for you to wake up and start a new life without watchtowers leading you and guiding you into false teaching. Those are the questions I want you to answer to yourself when you look in the mirror. And think about one more thing. What could you have done when you heard rumors about pedophiles in your kingdom hall? Are you going to wait for Jehovah, your false god, to clean house? Or are you going to call the cops to clean house? The choice is yours. Stop giving money to Watchtower. There is no Bible proof or evidence to do this now. Set you free. Stop giving your life hard earned money to a corrupt organization, a dangerous cult. Choice is yours. You could use that money for anything else, but you want to give it to a false organization. And you call me sick and mental disease. I think you better take another look in the mirror. Another look. Before you call someone mental disease. I stopped giving money to the Watchtower. Lucky I didn't give enough money to the Watchtower. And I'm glad I was one greedy person that kept my money. People, you need to wake up now. Thank you.